Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to this month's Best and Worst of Beauty. It is April already, which means March has come and gone. <sighs> Went by so quickly? I have no complaints. That's a lie, because I have some products on my pyramid that I was not happy with, that I tried out, that I used this past month of March. That's best and worst of beauty for ya. We start with the worst products I tried out last month, and we work our way up the pyramid to the very best of the best products this month. We might have a new holy grail favorite product here this month for this pyramid. So, it's a 10 product spread. I've got a lot to tell you guys. I'm going to cut the chit chat short here in the intro and we can sing this song together and then get on into it. It's the best and worst of beauty, whether good or bad, here's the down and dirty. So bottom of the pyramid, I had no questions. I was actually upset because this was supposed to have gone straight into the garbage after I tried it out. I hated it that much, but I had to save it these past couple weeks so that I could include this in my best and worst of beauty. I got this in at my BoxyCharm this past month. This is the AMNH Skincare Kiss the Stars 24 Karat Gold Limp, <laughs> Limp, Lip Plumping Mask. From the slapped on crooked label down to the spelling error, or not spelling error, I suppose it's a grammatical error here. My memory card filled up, my apologies. But uh, yeah, we basically have something that it looks like it came out of a Girl Scout's basement. Like this looks like something that a child could have made and was going to sell at their local boutique to make some money for their troop organization, whatever. And listen, we've all got to start somewhere. What do I know? Maybe this is a startup brand. I just, you could, it needs, it could do better. Okay. Uh, and the actual product itself was not for me. It is this goopy, glittery, supposed to be a lip mask. It didn't do anything for my lips. I, I mean, part of it was a textural problem. I just hated the way that it feels on my lips. I don't like, I don't know, it's weird because I like thick, luscious, lip balms, but when it comes to like, I guess when they're boogery and wet like this, because I'm assuming of the aloe in here, I just hate that texture. It reminds me of like a sheet face mask that is like extra coated in goo. I just didn't like it. And like I said, it didn't do anything to help my lips out. So overall, this was a no-no for me. From the packaging to the product to the results or lack thereof, as I said, into the garbage it goes. Now this next product on the bottom of the pyramid, <laughs> BoxyCharm, you didn't do great last month. <laughs> and we have a product that actually angered me. Now listen, I don't know anything about this brand. B Beauty London, maybe they're great. And the formula wasn't what was bad here. Like these shadows actually worked just fine for me. They had good lasting power. They applied easily. It's the actual shade selection. Try and tell me this doesn't make you irrationally angry, right? Like, I don't know if it, no, I do know. I think it's the mix of colors we all have and seen already down to the tonal mistakes. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to call it. The tonal atrocities, the crimes against humanity. I, I, like I said, this palette just makes me angry. And a lot of you in the comments of that video said that it did the same thing to you when you opened this up. I mean, these colors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen of the fifteen shades? No, twenty shades. Wow. Cassie can count. Either way, pretty much over half the palette could have been condensed down to like three different colors. These all right here. We didn't need them. These all right here. Didn't need them. Like it just... Uh, as I said, the formula is not bad. But like, please, be Beauty London. I hope if you ever make any other palettes or that if you have any other palettes, maybe get a new person to put the colors together because this, this ain't it. 
Next up on the bottom of the pyramid here, at least we are moving on past products that made me angry last month. This is just a general product that didn't work out for me. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Foundation Plus Concealer. I had high hopes because I feel like the butter line of products from Physician's Formula, you know, their bronzer, their highlights, all of that, really good. Like they're really, really great products. And so I just figured the foundation was gonna be great too. Now, as someone with oily skin, to see butter in the name of the foundation, it's it, it doesn't bode well, but I wanted to give it a try anyways, whatever, who knows, you never know. Well, I found out this, this was not made for me or oily skin in general. First off, as per usual, I feel like Physician's Formula is pretty notorious of having a quite orange shade range. This was orange on me for sure. And just the general formula, I mean, it says it's a foundation plus concealer. I personally didn't feel like it had the kind of coverage to be claiming it conceals or has the power of a concealer. And as I said, the formula just overall did not work for me. It was the type that just gets super greasy, super heavy looking and feeling and wipes right off. I feel like quite a few people said in the comments of the video that they thought this looked really nice on my skin and I do appreciate that. I just, I wear my makeup for me and I personally didn't like it. So I will not be using that in the future. <laughs> So now last thing here on the bottom of the pyramid is a product that I just, I don't know that there's anything that I like about it. It works, but it's not for me. And that would be this Benefit Their Real Magnet Mascara. I was curious to try this out, A, because I feel like I, there, I mean, I like a couple of Benefits mascaras, the Roller Lash and the Bad Gal Bang. And so I was curious about this new one just in that sense, but then also because I felt like the models that they were using in the ads, their lashes didn't look good. And so for them to use that as the ad for this mascara, I was like, so it's gonna be horrible, right? Like they can't even get it to look good on the model's lashes? And unfortunately my hunch was correct. <laughs> At least that's how I felt and I feel like a lot of you in the comments said the exact same thing that you've tried this mascara and you thought it was absolute garbage. It just, it looks clumpy, it looks curdled, it smudges, it flakes really bad throughout the day. I guess the only redeeming thing about this is that it is a very lightweight formula, but like, ew. I, I hated this. I really did not enjoy this mascara. I will never be wearing it again, and I'm okay with that. Moving on to the next tier of the pyramid here, I have got another mascara that I tried out this past month, and while it was better than the last one, I still didn't like it. <laughs> And it would be this one right here. This is the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara of TikTok fame. There was so much hype. It took forever for me to even be able to find this mascara or get this mascara. I honestly, I haven't found it in stores. I still don't ever see this in stock in stores. It's sells out pretty immediately as far as I can tell, and it's because it's famous on TikTok. Well, I don't understand the hype at all. Now, Liz, it's not bad. It's just not good. Like, there are so many other better mascaras, even at the drugstore, that I would much rather use than this one. It just, it's nothing special on the lashes. Like I said, it doesn't make them look bad like I thought the Magnet Mascara from Benefit did, but it didn't make them look great or phenomenal or anything of the sort. Also, it's an absolute bugger to get off. The removal process is just horrendous. I can't even imagine what the waterproof one is like. I just overall, <sighs> Not worth the hype, not worth the hunt, not worth space on my shelf. We're getting into products that I would actually continue using. So they're not my favorite, but at least they're not going in the garbage like the ones we have covered so far. I don't know that I thought it was fabulous in the beginning, but I certainly didn't think it was quite as bad as it is now. And it's not that it's bad, 
but it's kind of mediocrity at its finest here. Uh, this is the e.l.f. Wow Brow in the shade Neutral Brown. I'm pretty sure I had gotten this for a video that I did with iHerb and I tested out a full face of e.l.f. products and this does work quite well in the beginning anyways as a brow gel. It's got fibers in it so if you're into that this does have that and it does well in terms of you know not being too wet it doesn't make my brows crunchy or anything I like the way it makes my brows look but it's the wearer of this product it doesn't hold your brows in place well at all I feel like my brows get pretty wonky throughout the day with this on because it just doesn't have that staying power and I mean it's still there at the end of the night so it does stay on but it doesn't stay in place so overall i mean for a budget beauty pick yeah like it's not the worst in the world i don't hate this stuff it's just not the best now moving on here i am forever on a quest i feel like to find my holy grail perfection perfection i i just am um, i want to find the perfect top coat for my nails, I do, and one that is, you know, cruelty-free and all of that. So, Orly, cruelty-free brand, great. I think vegan as well, I could be wrong on that, but I tried out this Orly Glosser High Shine Top Coat, or I have been trying it for the past month-ish. It's not the worst but it's not great. It does make your nails look quite shiny. Not the shiniest I've ever seen, but definitely gives you that shiny top coat, which I love. The thing that I hate about it is that it really makes my nails chip on the tips. And I don't know, I think I might've found a really good brand of nail polish, uh, Cirque Colors, right? Because it has only chipped on a couple. I've had my nails painted for a couple weeks here. I feel like I'm going on a couple weeks. But with other brands, this top coat caused my nail polish to chip really badly on the tips of my nails. So that was a huge bummer. And then also like, even though it hasn't chipped, it gets those crackles in it. You know, some top coats just do that and I don't think the camera will be able to pick it up, but it does like that spidering crackling on the nails. So like I said, it's not bad. I can definitely use this up, no big deal, but would I ever repurchase it? Probably not. And I am going to continue looking for my Holy Grail top coat because this just, it's fine but it's, it ain't it. Now moving on up, moving on up to products that I actually like. I, I feel like it was a really dud month for products for the most part, but that being said, we are moving to the second of the top tier of the pyramid, my top three products here. We've got some good stuff. BoxyCharm, you redeemed yourself, yay, except kind of not, because this was not from this last month, it was from the month before. But either way, I've got this cream blush that I had gotten in a BoxyCharm from Wander Beauty. This is the Double Date Lip and Cheek Tint. Uh, the top shade, I think there's two of these, and this one is in the shade Sweet Talker. It's a cream blush, so there's condensation in here, but like, First off, I love the packaging. I just think it's real cute, the clear pink packaging. I love that there's also a lip balm in here. It's not the best lip balm in the world, but like, cute idea for sure. And like, if I'm ever traveling, not that I ever traveled much anyways, but especially nowadays not traveling, you know, would be nice to have. And also, the main star, this blush, is gorgeous. I'm not a huge cream blush person, because like, typically, I wear a lot of mattifying and powder type products because I have very oily skin and cream products on top of that just tend to not do great. You know, it usually rubs off the makeup underneath and just makes things look not great. <laughs> but this past month, I feel like I've just not been wearing a lot of foundation like at all because my skin has been doing pretty dang good. Right now it's not 
<laughs> but um, you know it had been doing really quite well and so I was really enjoying just having really nice healthy fresh bare skin but then a cream highlight and blush on my cheeks and I just I think it looks great I love the color of this it's so peachy and just makes you look nice and healthy and alive it lasts all day it blends really nicely onto the skin like I just I have no complaints except for the fact that I found a sharp chunk in here when I first opened it up but I got it out and all is well we are friends now <laughs> so I can see this being an absolute staple in my makeup agenda repertoire coming up for the summer months here I mean it's we're in the first days of April and we're already in the low 80s like they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine but you just can't to say I'm not looking forward to the summer it's an understatement but to say that I really like this product that's pretty much spot on <laughs> Now, second to the top product on my pyramid, this is a product or a group of products that I'm pretty sure have been mostly the only things I've been wearing on my lips. I have just been loving these lip tints from ColourPop. These were from the Animal Crossing collection. This is half of them. You know, there were six of them, but these are the three that I've been using and that I've really been loving. So I've got Cherry Cherry, Orange Cutie, and Incompatible. Terrible. Mm, love a good pun. This one, the pear one, is the one that I've been using the most. It's the one I have on today. And I do really like these with either a stain underneath them or a lip liner especially because it just amps up the color and helps them to stay a little bit longer. You don't need anything underneath these. These work great on their own. It's just a different type of look. You know, when you've got the stain or the lip liner underneath, it makes it look more like a lipstick. But if you just wear these on their own, they look more like a tinted balm type of a look. They're great. They are hydrating. They pack a good punch of color on their own. They smell fantastic. They smell like their corresponding fruit. So the cherry one smells like cherry. The orange one smells like orange. The pear one like pear. I think that's awesome that they did that. You know, they didn't have to. They could have just done a generic fruit smell for all of them. But the fact that they did differentiate them, I mean, they're adorable with the fruits on the caps to go with the Animal Crossing. I mean, it's just, they're a fantastic formula. I really liked these. I think they're called lippy tints or lip crayons. Okay, well, either way, it's a good formula. I've used it before, and these I've just been really, really enjoying this past month. Like I said, it's pretty much been the only thing I've put on my lips aside from regular lip balm and aside from any lip products that I've had to try out for like, you know, a BoxyCharm video or something. Those have been my go-to. Those have been my staple. Can't recommend them enough. But now, top of the pyramid, I'm sure some of you are saying, Cassie, I thought you said there was a possible holy grail product in your pyramid. Well, patience is a virtue, my friend. We had to get to the top of the pyramid to get to the possibly holy grail product here. Ah, BoxyCharm, once again, you have redeemed yourself from the two worst products <laughs> to two of the best. And this one, as I said, might be my favorite highlighter ever. It's hard to say, but it's certainly in my top three. Oh my goodness, Laura Mercier, you have done a thing and it is fabulous. It's a little bit of a misnomer, I feel like. It's called the Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade Highlight 01. I feel like this should be called the Radiance Highlighter or Baked Radiance Powder or something because I thought this was a face powder, a matte one, no. It's not matte in the slightest. I don't know why it's called that, but either way, it is this beautiful baked highlight that just gives the most, not even beautiful, the most gorgeous glow on the cheeks. Like, it's so natural, but it's so amped, but it's just, uh, I don't know that I can, I don't think words can do justice to this highlight. It is dare I say perfection? Like I said, aside from the name being a bit confusing, I don't have any complaints. Lasting power, application, beautiful, beautiful, actual product, beautiful, gorgeous, love, everything about it. If you like a more natural, not wham bam thank you ma'am, in your face from outer space, 
type of highlight because those are not my jam and you would much rather have like maybe a across the street I saw you and then my eye caught a little twinkle of highlight as well when I was gazing upon your beautiful face. I feel like that's what this is, you know? Aliens are not seeing your highlight and saying, mmm, looks good. But the stranger across the street might notice, yeah? And I'm okay with that. In fact, I love it. Like I said, this highlight is just, ah! And I feel like when I tried this out, I think it was two boxy charms ago now, there were a few people in the comments, I think two or three people that said they've been using this for years and it is so underhyped. Like they never hear people talk about it and they don't know why because it is the most beautiful, beautiful thing ever. I understand why. It, it's <sighs> Love. Love, 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 love. Ah, so there we have it. I feel like, has it been? I, it's been a while since I've had a 10 product pyramid, right? Either way, I just feel like it's been years since I've filmed a best and worst of beauty, which is strange because it, it hasn't been. <laughs> but either way, there you go. There was my roundup of my least favorite products I was testing out this past month all the way on up through the mediocrity onto the possible new love of my life holy grail products. I hope you guys enjoyed it, got some good insights, some good recommendations and non-recommendations, all that good stuff. Please let me know A, what your best and worst of beauty was for this past month, and then also B, if you have tried out any of these products that I mentioned and whether or not you feel the same or differently as me. I love getting that kind of feedback and just hearing what other people's opinions on products are because there is no universal opinion on anything and I personally like that I like hearing from you guys so let me know all of the things down below you can also let me know if you enjoyed the video found it helpful whatever the case may be by giving it a thumbs up down below I'd really appreciate it and if you're new here hey hi hello how are you you can go ahead and subscribe you can typically tap that notification bell down below and become a member of my casserole family here on my channel i'd love to have you here and as always i hope you guys are all doing well and until next time just stay well until then bye